So I can't tell if this is absolutely generic or if it's totally genius. Oh. Hi, welcome. My name is Angelina and today we are going to be reviewing Ive's pre-release single, Kitsch, which will be featured on their first full-length album, Ive Ive. But it's like I apostrophe V-E Ive, do you know what I mean? Even though Ive already stands for Ive as far as I know, right? <laughs> but I digress, it will be out on April 10th, the same day that Kepler is having a comeback, so that should be interesting. We'll have a little war on who I should review that day. Now, Starship doesn't seem to be too big on teasers this time around, or any time around. I'm acting like I've been keeping track, but you keep that between me and you, I have no idea. But out of the blue, they released this video titled, It's Our Time, Kitch, which I thought was quite bold and quite exciting. And then of course, just yesterday, we got another teaser before the release of it today. So it's good, it's nice and straight to the point. We don't have to spend too much time even waiting for the title track, which is gonna come out less than a month from now, which I personally prefer because sometimes you just get too many teasers. There's almost too much content, if that's even possible. And you almost get desensitized to the comeback and then by the time it happens you're just like oh well eh, it, it, it's you know I don't know sometimes it's good to not let people ponder on it too much and you just you just release it and it is what it is you don't have enough time to put your expectations to the ceiling and thus I feel like you can enjoy the comeback even more like I just find when songs come out of the blue there's just not that much pressure on them but let me know what you think about that so this pre-release is titled Kitsch. Now, what does Kitsch mean? I mean, obviously I know, I know what Kitsch means. I'm very smart. But for you guys, for you guys, I'll, I'll, I'll read the definition. <laughs> So, according to Oxford Art Dictionary, kitsch is arts, objects, or designs considered to be in poor taste because of an excessive garishness or sentimentality, but sometimes appreciated in an ironic or knowing way. Many art critics argue that kitsch art is characterized by exaggerated sentimentality and melodrama. I love the definition of that. That sounds so much fun. However, can I picture I've a fourth gen girl group, which we all, you know, let's not beat around the bush. Fourth gen is known for visuals, right? Not only visuals, but this is an argument that I see being constantly reiterated that, you know, fourth gen don't really care about anything else but visuals. I'll talk about it more in depth in a podcast episode, but you know, yes, that's, but that's basically the world though, not just fourth gen. The world does very much care about visuals, but you know, this is the K-pop channel and K-pop specifically for fourth gen. Can I picture a fourth gen k-pop group especially i've who are very much known for their elegance can i picture them doing something tacky something in poor taste something very garish i don't even know what that means can i picture them doing something so bad that it's ironically loved in a knowing way not really but you know we'll see but i'm curious to see i'm curious to see what they make of kitsch if anything at all sometimes we see a concept within the title of something and that's all it is it's just the title of something and it doesn't need to be any deeper than that it doesn't need to be wholeheartedly part of the way that they're dressing the styling the concept the music video do you know what i mean like not everything has to be so black and white like that like this title of the song is kitsch and we're going to get a full-on kitsch concept do you know what i mean even though that's it would be fun what i did notice that was different about this comeback this time around is that the teasers felt a lot more girl crush than i feel like we're used to seeing Ive. As I mentioned previously, Ive are more known for their elegance. And I don't think it's totally off track from a girl crush concept. I think it's girl crush adjacent, but they, as far as I know, haven't fully done a girl crush concept. But Kitsch, at least in the teasers, felt quite girl crush. So I was excited to see, you know, where they were going with that. Enough talking about what they're going to give us. Let's finally get into it and check out this comeback. So the music video starts off with some stunning visuals, of course, which permeate throughout the entirety of the music video. You know, the music video is not necessarily anything to write home about. It is equal parts face shots as it is choreography, with more or less, I would say mainly less kitsch elements peeking through, which is difficult, okay? We absolutely need to talk about the kitsch elements because... <laughs> That's the thing. You know, I obviously just learned, no, I didn't just learn about it. I totally knew what kitsch was before this video. But, you know, not fully knowing the concept of kitchen, only knowing it's art, Oxford dictionary, what it means. I'm thinking like it needs to be tacky and people need to love it in an ironic way. The thing is, <laughs> there's so many elements of this music video where I'm like, oh, maybe that's kitsch, maybe that's kitsch. But those same very elements are textbook elements that you could find in almost any other K-pop music video. So I can't tell if this is absolutely generic or if it's totally genius. Because you know those jackets and this type of school girl-ish styling, we see it all the time, but this time it feels 
slightly tackier. But is that intentional or is it unintentional? It's hard to find that line if there is a line between what they're trying to show us is kitsch or if it's just what you typically see in a K-pop music video. I like I don't want to say that in any type of way, even though I absolutely hate schoolgirl outfits. But do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? If we take if we take a look at these kind of pink outfits, do some of them look a little tacky? Absolutely, but they also feel very trendy and stylish, right? Like I wouldn't I could have pictured this as another group styling. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know where if it's supposed to be kitsch or if it's supposed to just be what it is. Do you know what I'm... <laughs> I feel like I'm digging myself a hole because if it's not meant to be kitsch... Anyways, but in terms of the music video, there's not really much else to say other than some of the styling elements. Though, there is a neon sign that says, you're so weird, don't change. Which again, I can't tell if it's supposed to be like you know, outlandish. Cause you could interpret that as kind of cringy and you know, something very cliche to say. You know, everyone was clowning Cole Sprouse in his character in Riverdale when he's like, I'm so weird. So is this playing into kitsch? Cause it's another element where I feel like it could be part of any other music video and no one would really bat an eye to it. I can't, again, I feel like I've heard totally being geniuses out here, but I don't know. Cause they could be just kind of slightly clowning on all of these elements that are like typically found in a lot of music videos, or they could be serious about it. You're so weird, don't change. <laughs> But anyways, other than that, I don't think the music video is anything like, like in comparison to the song, I feel like the song is a really where the interest lies because it's, it's, it's definitely interesting. You know, they, I was out here doing mixed pop. Love me like this. You can argue all you want to the now that it's mixed pop. This is more mixed pop than in mix. When the song first started, I thought, you know, maybe the girl crush elements we were seeing in the teasers we're just clickbait. Maybe, you know, has nothing to do with the song. We've seen that for teasers before. No, most notably Blackpink, right? They release these super extravagant teasers and then you it's nowhere to be seen in the music video. So I thought maybe it's something like that because it felt more I've. We had this more elegant sound mixed with these inspirational feelings, most notably present in the pre-chorus. And as we build up those feelings of inspiration, it suddenly switches to something very different. And that's where we get the girl crush theme and the chanting of, our carefree 90s kitsch. With the lyrics basically expressing like, I'll do whatever I wanna do, you know? You can't fool me, I won't be fooled by you cause I'm different, I'm smart. Which again are lyrics that I've definitely heard in other songs, but if we're viewing it through this kind of kitsch lens, it does feel like, quite cliche like it is so cliche it is something we've heard before but in that sense you could appreciate it through a different lens i don't know <laughs> oh my god i've never had to fucking think this much damn it i've like we've all seen people make fun of like the i'm not the other girls trope right so if it's not meant in an ironic way it just feels mean to think that oh my god <laughs> the turmoil i just can't decide if this is meant to be kitsch or if this is just you know, stereotypically things that we see in K-pop music videos. So I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. Is this just absolutely genius? Like this is just way beyond anything. The subtlety of the message of kitsch is just so ingrained into everything. The lyrics, the music video, that is just way beyond anything we could ever understand. Or is it just... <laughs> It just really did remind me of Itzy's original, you know, love yourself message. I'm gonna do what I want, I'm different. Which there's nothing inherently wrong with it, right? Absolutely not. But everyone was clowning on them and everyone was kind of getting sick of it and hating it and thinking like, you know, you can sing about other things. It really made me think of that. But then again, Itzy was never being ironic with their statements. But as I've commented on I sound like every other fucking K-pop bitch trying to like make meaning out of something that probably has no meaning, right? Now, before we get into the discussion part of this video, I will share briefly what I think of this song, which is, I think it's interesting. It's interesting, you know, I didn't get my mix pop with Love Me Like This, so when I heard like kind of two songs in one, which I do think the verses versus the chorus sound quite different. You know, I was excited. I don't know how I feel about it, but I was excited for, for some chaos. NMAX ditching their mix pop concept and I've having basically two songs in one was not on my bingo card. However, it's not like a song where I'm like, I immediately need to stream it, like it's a love at first sight. I mean, to be fair, all of their previous releases as well were growers. I know that's so blasphemous to say, but when Eleven came out, I appreciated it from far. Like I liked the instrumentals and everything, but it never really, well, to be fair, I never actually got around to Eleven or Love Dive. 
after like was the only one that I actually did genuinely stream. Do I picture myself streaming this one? I'm not sure, but I do find it interesting. I think it's interesting. It's a nice little, you know, it is a pre-release and I think, ooh, I wouldn't, I won't be too hard on it because it is a pre-release. If this was the title check, I'd feel differently. But as a pre-release, I think it's fun. It is fun. You know, the course definitely comes out of nowhere, but some of you guys stand at some and have the guts to say that shit. <laughs> But it does make me want to listen to it quite a few more. Like, I've already listened to it a, a few times, but I want to listen to it more and, like, fully get the idea. Like, I so desperately want to understand this song, and I think I need to get to the bottom of what kitsch is. I need to, <laughs> I need to get, like, a PhD in fucking art history or something to understand. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted. The end of the month is almost here, and we'll see where this ranks. But let's get to the discussion part of this video. So I asked you guys in my community tab, what do you think of Ives Kitsch? Do you think it's actually Kitsch? Because I'm so curious if you guys see what I see. <laughs> and I feel like on the internet, there's always going to be somebody who knows more than you. And I'm hoping somebody's going to give me some more insight. The mistreatment of Liz is crazy. She had one line the whole song. She's the main vocalist. <gasps> As my mom would say, maybe her vocals were tired. <laughs> I'm happy that God and Ray got more lines since it's more rap based type of song, but I'm surprised that Liz, Ives main vocalist, got only six seconds throughout the whole song. She literally got one line in the first verse. <gasps> I didn't notice. Song's fun and more hippie. I really like it. The chorus is really catchy and pre-chorus is my favorite. I love that they took a different turn from their previous releases. My only problem is Liz's lines like, Starship, are you kidding me? Anyways, can't wait for the album. I was surprised how calm most of it was, but after the second listen, I really began to enjoy it. A very nice pre-release. I don't care what anyone says. I love kitsch. Kitsch is the way, the truth, and my life. And the life. My only complaint would be to give Liz and Kyle more lines and screen time, but other than that, One Young and Rice slaved so hard. I like everything except the chorus. Also love their voices in this song. I really enjoy it. It feels like a song that you would want to hear in a beauty store or when you go shopping and want to have fun with the girls. I love the pre-chorus the most. It is the perfect build-up, however, I don't know how I actually feel about the chorus. The chorus is not bad or that I hate it, but it didn't really match up with the pre-chorus. Yeah, it's quite like a roller coaster, I would say. Overall, it is still a very fun, catchy song that I will be replaying, and I can't believe, and I believe it will chart well. I think I've sound till now is pretty chic yet youthful, and they have been consistent with the quality. Definitely makes me anticipate the title track. Ooh, everybody, <laughs> everybody is so mad about Liz. Ooh, I loved it. I wouldn't define it as actually kitsch, but I thought it was fun, right? Unless, no, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. I'm trying here for Ive. I'm here. I'm out here trying for this group, okay? I only like the pre-chorus and the chorus, but separately. Ooh. Hence, mix pop. It's giving mix pop already. People don't like it. It, yeah, feels like mix pop. The chorus threw me off so much, but I think if it was in a different song, it would have potential. Was expecting much better from their first album. I hope this is the only disappointing song. If, if this isn't like flashbacks to when OO and Dice were released. The chorus feels weirdly disjointed from the rest of the song on my first listen, and the whole vibe is much more aligned with their B-sides, which I don't mind at all because my satisfaction is amazing. It's an 8.5 out of 10 for now, but that could def change since I don't like 11 that much on first listen either. Could be a great grower. Not the Liz mistreatment, no. <laughs> Maybe it's the Mandela effect, but I'm pretty sure they have a member named Liz. I don't know. This song is good. The problem is that as a German, I cringe a little when they say kitsch. So, but I think it will go away after listening it to a few times. This is definitely not kitsch though. Okay, I don't like it that much after listening to it. <laughs> That's some character development. I love it. But yeah, that is basically it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. As for me, I'm going to get going, but I'll see you guys next time. You can also join my channel members by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button, or you can join my Patreon. Bye!